Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Carly. Today's video might be a little chaotic. I'm filming pretty late and that's simply because I have a lot going on right now. I'm in the middle of launching my brand, Two Storms Apparel. We are focusing on severe weather education and mental health advocacy, two things you all know I care immensely about. And depending on when this video goes out, I'll either be in the process of or have already done the soft launch. So if you haven't already and you are interested in the Two Storms mission, the charities we're going to be donating to, any kind of educational content, and the apparel, including these earrings, you can follow the Two Storms social media in the description down below. It'll have the Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, and the website for everything listed below in addition to my regular social media. So just to get that out of the way, things are a little chaotic right now, but I'm so incredibly excited to put this out there. And I'll have another video talking about this very soon. So yeah, thank you guys for the patience. Yeah, I think that's it on that end. <clears throat> yeah. Moving on to today's topic, it's going to be a little bit lighter and more fun than usual. And that's simply because the past couple of videos have weighed really heavy on me and I think it's important that I give myself a little bit of a mental break in between some of the heavier pieces that I am constantly reading about and I know you guys will be understanding of that. So I hope you will enjoy content like today's. And that brings us to the idea for today's video, which is F6 tornadoes. Why on earth are we talking about F6 tornadoes when they don't exist? And <laughs> we all know that F6 tornadoes don't exist. And to that, I would say you're right, yes. But I do want to push back on that just a little bit. Over all the years that I've been interested in tornadoes and of all of the literature that I've read about them, which has been a lot, there's been a couple of times where I've come across really interesting documents about a sort of ambiguous or inconceivable F6 tornado. And it was actually just recently as I was writing a script for the Lubbock, Texas tornado that I came across a statement from the National Weather Service from this year disclosing that the Lubbock, Texas tornado was actually originally not rated an F5, but an F6. And finally, not long after, I came across a title of a very interesting Thomas Grizzoli's book, F5 to F6 Tornadoes. After that, I knew I really wanted to talk with you all about this because I find the idea and the concept of it to be so intriguing. To be absolutely clear to anyone who is watching with a clenched fist or about to pop a blood vessel, the F6 tornado, as we're going to discuss today, and anything more than the EF5 rating we use today, is nothing more than an immeasurable theoretical construct. But it's an idea that I do really think is worth exploring just a little bit. And finally, before we get into the meat and potatoes of today's video, I do want to add a disclaimer. Today's topic is meant to be fun and certainly not meant to be taken seriously. We're just having an interesting conversation about something that I think you guys will enjoy. All right, let's get into it. Let's talk about the inconceivable F6 tornado. Mother Nature has more power than sometimes we can even really fully comprehend. And the truth about tornadoes is that we still really don't understand fully their innermost intricacies and just how powerful they truly can be. Therefore, in my personal opinion and in the opinion of many others in the weather community, the idea that there's a tornado or could be a tornado that exceeds the upper EF5 echelon is really not out of the realm of possibilities. And you know who else thought this way as well? Dr. Ted Fujita. In order to have a discussion on the idea of the inconceivable F6 tornado, we have to set the stage, starting of course with the Fujita scale and its creator, Dr. Ted Fujita. 
While I know most of you are already familiar with the original Fujita scale and some of its concepts, there's so much more rich history and depth to Dr. Ted Fujita's contribution to meteorology, and I want to discuss it just a little bit more. Tetsuya Theodore Fujita was a Japanese-American meteorologist who held a lifelong fascination with storms and the damage they caused. Fujita was exposed early on in his career to extreme damage analysis, which he would later become an expert in when he was asked to survey the remains of the wreckage in Nagasaki in 1945. A few short years later, when invited to study storm formation at the University of Chicago in 1953, Fujita absolutely flourished in his field. Being exposed to the wild twisters of the United States allowed Fujita to recreate scenes of destruction and understand the inner workings of tornadoes, which was something that had never really been done before. And it wasn't long after observing these storms that he began to discover groundbreaking new concepts to meteorological studies. Fujita was the first to introduce the idea of the wall cloud from which tornadoes often descend. He was also the first scientist to recognize multiple smaller section vortices within apparent circulation, which was a major revelation in tornado research. He even discovered the phenomenon of downburst and microburst after being called to the tragic crash of Eastern Airlines Flight 66. The discovery of microburst and downburst led to dramatic industry-level changes in aviation that are still used in pre-flight checks today. When you hear the wind shear check, that is actually in part due to Dr. Ted Fujita's contribution. These contributions were nothing short of revolutionary in the field of meteorology, particularly in the mid to late 20th century when the technology still was a little lacking. So it's because of the life work of Dr. Ted Fujita, trailblazing scientist and tornado researcher who dared to understand these violent storms, that we eventually got the Fujita scale. And it was really unquestionable that the only person on Earth who really understood tornadoes well enough at that point to create a system that could categorize the world's most violent storms, it was Dr. Ted Fujita. Now that we've laid the foundation, let's talk about the Fujita scale itself, from its conception to modernization, and some of which I think will actually really surprise you. Most of you are already familiar with the general concept of both the older and the newer Fujita scale. Both are a six-tier scale that seek to rate tornadoes from F or EF0 being the weakest to an F or an EF5 being the strongest tornadoes that we know of. What you might be less familiar with, however, is the original concept of the scale. The original system was designed to integrate two previously established systems, the Mach number scale and the Buford wind scale, and these two would be used to help create the Fujita scale. This scale, in theory, would give the best estimate, or really an educated guess, as to the damage and potential damage that could be caused by tornadoes. The original Fujita scale was actually designed as a 13-tier system, from F0, of course, being the lightest damage, all the way up into an F12. However, the scale really only went up to the highest known damage that had ever been caused, which was estimated at 300 miles per hour, and was the F5 tier. There was, however, room above the F5 for more tiers which would reflect damage that we've never seen before or really knew to be possible. Particularly the tier just above the F5, the inconceivable F6 tornado tier. And the idea of the F6 tier is of particular interest because in theory it's not very far away from some of the tornadoes that we've seen before, which are over 300 miles per hour, including the 2011 El Reno Piedmont Twister, 2013 Moore, 1999 Moore, maybe Phil Campbell Hackleberg, amongst several others. So that brings us to really today's question. 
is the idea of an F6 or more generally an inconceivable tornado really that far away? I don't really think so. And neither did Dr. Ted Fujita. In fact, the F6 rating has been given twice by Dr. Ted Fujita. Once in the 1974 super outbreak to the Xenia, Ohio tornado, and again in 1970 from the Lubbock, Texas tornado. In both instances, the tornadoes were dubbed as having caused, quote, inconceivable damage when initially surveyed and photographed by Dr. Ted Fujita, although they would later, of course, be downgraded to conform to the original scale. And I also do want to mention something really interesting here. Dr. Ted Fujita wasn't the only expert in tornadoes that believed that there was an idea that there could be an inconceivable F6 tornado. Of the many works Thomas Grizzulis has published in his career, the book's Significant Tornadoes being the most popular by far, there is one book that stuck out to me more than any of the others, and it's titled F5 to F6 Tornadoes, published in 2001. And it's in this book, F5 to F6 Tornadoes, that Thomas Grizzoli states, quote, In my opinion, if there ever was an F6 tornado caught on video, it was the Pampa, Texas tornado of 1995. And I'm not really here to question the ratings because that's not something I'm ever really interested in doing. I'm more so questioning the scale itself. How are we really so sure of the EF1 to EF5 ratings when we don't ourselves fully understand the intricacies of tornadoes. It just seems like there's so much more room to improve. And really at this point in 2023, meteorologists, the National Weather Service, wind engineers, anyone who's really familiar with the Fujita scale or actively uses it knows that it's a flawed system at best and it's not really what it needs to be in terms of accuracy. And that's kind of undisputed to the point where Noah has actually stated that, quote, precise wind speed numbers are actually guesses and have never been scientifically verified. Different wind speeds may cause similar looking damage from place to place, even building to building. Without thorough engineering analysis of a tornado's damage in any event, the actual wind speeds needed to cause that damage are unknown, end quote. So that should tell you kind of everything you need to know about the way the EF system today as it stands is. All of this leaves a lot of room for us to wonder and particularly wonder how powerful some of these tornadoes actually truly are and how powerful can they potentially be and when you put it that way it almost seems like there has to be some way that there are tornadoes possible of or that have already been past that f5 or ef5 upper echelon rating as it stands right now with the ef scale and really the fujita scale generally without better technology The rating that's given to any tornado is really hindered to the structural integrity of whatever the strongest building it hit was. So to get a better understanding of the tornado's intensity at its peak, you would need the core of the tornado or one of the suction vortices to hit the strongest building in the area and then be able to deduce how strong it was from whatever damage it caused, which statistically for the strongest part of a tornado to hit your best building on a good day is very slim. Even the National Weather Service themselves recognize that winds greater than 319 miles per hour, which is where the EF5 rating caps out, is really possible in theory and not just possible, but probable. I do want to also note that the EF5 rating does technically include anything that is an EF5 or above, so it would technically include the idea of the hypothetical F6 inconceivable tornado. But of course, that's not as fun, you know? We want to know if it's an F6 tornado. We want to know if it goes beyond the EF5 rating or not. At this point, though, in October of 2023, it's been over 10 years since we have had even our last EF5 rating. 
it almost seems like the trend now is to give EF4 violent ratings and to really conserve the EF5 rating for only the singular most incredible, unbelievable damage that seems at this point impossible. And it's really strange to think about how many EF5 tornado ratings were given out just 10 years ago in 2011, 2013 to now the standard being so high that we can't get any EF5 ratings anymore. I'm not questioning it, but I'm just saying it seems like the EF5 is the inconceivable tornado and we're just not getting that rating anymore. I know it has more to do with the building codes, but still. So let's talk about the future of the EF scale. Even in 2023, concerns about the efficacy of the Enhanced Fujitist scale are still very much in question, mainly concerning the relationships between the observed degrees of damage and the wind speed ranges, which are notable flaws in the system. Currently, there are plans to revise the Fujita scale once again, largely spearheaded by Tim Marshall. And I will have a really fascinating article about the new, new Fujita scale in the description for you because it's a great read and I do encourage you all to check it out. So with the new Fujita scale, one of the more recent alternate methods that they are incorporating to estimate wind speeds includes mobile Doppler radar measurements, tree fall pattern analysis, and failure analysis of engineered structures. One of the best parts of the revisions that are coming for the new Fujita scale, in my opinion, are the fact that they are now working to incorporate new damage indicators. So in these new damage indicators that they're going to include, they will now make room for indicators for single and double wide trailers, which is huge, by the way. Additionally, wood frame residences and distinctions in tree types, whether they are soft or hardwood, which will make a big difference as well. So overall, although there is no official F6 or EF6 rating, until we're able to gather more real raw tornado data and extrapolate that, it is interesting in my opinion to speculate on the idea that there is something that is inconceivable or incomprehensible to us that mother nature is capable of or that we haven't even begun to really understand yet. And I honestly cannot wait to see the day, maybe when I'm much, much older, where we can a lot more fully understand the intricacies of tornadoes and how they work and just how powerful the suction vortices are. The inner workings of tornado mechanisms are an enigma. Anyways, that's all I have for this topic. It was very rambly on my end, but I honestly was so excited to talk about this a little bit. I know a lot of you guys will have probably far more insightful comments, but I think this is such a fun topic to play around with and it's a lot more light and gives me a chance to just explore different things in the community. So yeah, if you want to check out the Two Storms mission, go check it out in the description. You can go follow our social medias. There's going to be so much more information coming about that. I have a lot more earrings. I can actually show you right now some of the earrings. I just worked on them today. Big, huge shout out to the members. Thank you all so much. I can't believe that some of you are so kind enough to support me and my journey. And it really, I always say it, but it does mean so much to me. That's all I have. You can follow my social media. You can follow my friend's social media if you haven't already followed June 1st, Severe Weather, what are you doing? Follow June 1st, Severe Weather. And if you haven't already followed Tornado Pagey, what are you doing? Follow her as well. Thank you all so much for being here. I will see you all on the Two Storms social media, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.